from time to time there are cases that just happen to appear and will make me go nice. And it happened again, I went nice. So this is Nuvolo's Borg case and from the b-rolls you might not have been really able to perceive how small this thing really is. Let me help you. At two 35mm in each dimension with a 50mm high base, the small form factor mini ITX case comes in at a volume of only 12 liters. But what made me really go uh, nice is not even the baby size or beautiful aesthetic, not even the fact that the case comes in in a packaging which looks like it's straight out of an IKEA warehouse, cause believe me it is, it even got the color that on. No, it's the fact that despite all of these things it's really really easy to build an, a PC in it. But let's start at the beginning. Once you opened up your IKEA Kallax uh, Nouveau or Borg case, you'll be greeted with a dozen or, or two dozen of individually wrapped pieces. Which is great, it's safely packaged up so that nothing can go wrong. It's it's IKEA. Once everything is on the table, we've got something that should look like this. If you go to Novolo's product page about the bulk case, you will see a list of specifications, compatible devices, package content, and something that resembles an instruction manual. I printed it out and <clears throat> I worked with it. Not only do I have two pieces which are not mentioned on the package content list, but because of perspective issues and the fact that whoever made this only knows the color grey, I found a product image to be more helpful. So I really do hope that Novolo starts working on that manual in the future, but for now, let's just quickly go over the assembly process ourselves. We start up with the motherboard. This needs to be mounted down on these two pieces with the piece that has a hole along the RAM side and the other one on the other side with a little outsticking part going under the motherboard. Conveniently, Novolo includes a back of washer head M3 screws for exactly this. The next step is to prepare the PSU, so put it on the table with the power plug at the top and the fan looking towards you Position the PSU bracket with the flat side touching the PSU and the open side on the opposite side. And screw it down using your usual PSU screws or the ones that Nuvolo includes. Before we proceed it is absolutely crucial that you pre-install the cooler on the CPU. You may be able to install it later on if you have a prefix backplate or you don't need to change it, but if you do, it's gonna be a nightmare, so just quickly do that. Once you're done, we can begin assembling the actual case. With the base lying flat in front of us, we can insert the I.O. shield and orient the motherboard accordingly to it. Behind the motherboard, there will be now two threads visible, so screw down the motherboard using the included countersunk screws. By the way, these screws are meant for everything that keeps the case together. So I won't mention them at each step from now on, but just keep in mind, it's these screws. Now we can take the PSU, orient it with the fan facing away from the motherboard and position it on the right edge of the base. There will be two screws on the left and one on the right side, so screw them down. Now we can finally start assembling the actual case. Take these rounded rails and orient them so that the side with the two threads is in the bottom, position the rail on each of the case's corners and screw it down using a single screw in the bottom. After having that done for each side, we're gonna assemble the top of the case. First we need to take these two rails which have these pop-in fixations on each side. These rails are supposed to go in the front and behind the motherboard while creating a 90 degree angle around the top of the case. To mount them, we need to place them behind the outer rails and screw them in with a single screw on each side. After doing the same behind the motherboard, we can take the two leftover bigger rails that have a thread somewhere in the center and screw them down on the two leftover sides. Here again, place them inside and screw them in from the outside. Additionally, there are three screws supposed to go into the motherboard plate, which will from now on keep that one in place. At this point, it's the perfect time to mount the start button. Just place it on the motherboard plate and screw it down. Now it's time to mount the rails, which will take care of the AIOs and case fans. Firstly, we need to take the two rails, which have these outsticking pieces at the end. Position one of them in the bottom of the case 
in front of the motherboard and then screw it down. The other one needs to go on the left side of the case. The only rails left are the actual fan rails. You can prefix these fan rails to the case rails or you can just wait and mount these onto your fans and then the whole thing into your case later on. That's really up to you. Just keep in mind that these are screwed in using the motherboard screw. The last step for the assembly are the actual panels. First we need to put on the side panels. These are just meant to be hooked in, so place them and let them fall down. The top panel uses these pop-on, pop-off connections, so just place it and then pop it in. Before you move the case, let me really help you. Absolutely make sure that you glue these little protectors onto the bottom of the case, otherwise it, it will scratch the hell out of your desk. And voila, a piece of art. Okay, so there is still a huge topic we need to cover compatibility. Starting off with the GPU. According to Novolo, we can put a up to 210mm long 2-slot GPU. To make it easier to understand, Novolo even provides you with a couple of example cards which would definitely fit. For the PSU motherboard, if you haven't noticed it before, we are using a IDX motherboard and an SFX power supply. You can go with an SFX L power supply, but that's really it, you, you won't fit more in here. For hard drives and SSD supports, Novolo states that there can be up to three two and a half inch drives installed. And because the manual is so short, I had a really really hard time figuring out where these are. To make it even harder, you if you try to buy a Borg case on Novolo's website, you will be forwarded to density.sk. And even though I am very grateful that they included some finished build shots as these are the reason why I was able to put this together, they also got this image. I have no idea how and if at all an SSD is supposed to be mounted there. I don't know, I am sorry, I was not able to find out what, what this is supposed to mean. M maybe these two pieces have something to do with it? I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess Nuvolo really needs to, to start working on the manual because there is even an error with how many screws are keeping the start button in place. It's, it needs to be redone. That being said, no matter how you twist all of this, 3 is still a very wrong number. You are able to position the rails in a perfect distance to mount at least 2 drives per fan rail. Plus, I am like 70% sure that you can mount another one, or even two, right next to the motherboard. Sure, each drive would take away one fan spot and that would really suck and I wouldn't do it myself, but that's already four drives minimum. So the number three is wrong no matter what. Not even mentioning the fact that if I can mount a 120mm fan somewhere, I will also be able to mount a 3.5 inch drive. That being said, please keep in mind I do not own right now a physical SSD to confirm any of this. I did all of this using a a hard drive cage rail, so everything that I'm saying about SSDs or hard drives, take it with a really big grain of salt. While we are already on the subject of under-representation, fans. According to the website, we can mount three fans in here. A 92mm in the bottom, a 120 in front of the motherboard, and another 120 on the left side. According to that Slovakian shop, um, the left fan can only be up to 15mm thick, because it will protrude over the motherboard and its outsticking components. Something which should definitely be mentioned on the main product page, but it, it, but it isn't. I also wanted to note that due to another project that I have going on, I have multiple fans with multiple thicknesses lying around. And a 20mm thick fan will work perfectly fine. But not the standard 25mm one we all know, but 20 is okay. But it's really not the 5mm thickness that I wanted to talk about. The left and front fan are installed using movable rails. Rails which are taking up about 3 quarter of their max distance in 120mm mode. Does the whole world hate 140 fans? This is by far not the first time that I, I've seen a spec sheet and that says 120mm fan only and then I get it and I slap a 140 on there without any issue. It's 140 support is an advantage, not a downside. Exactly the, the same issue also applies to the fan mounted on the side. Fortunately, I have a 15mm thick 140mm fan lying around and I, I don't understand why you would not disclose this. Okay, the whole fan support, at least the one in front of the, the motherboard, has a 
really big asterisks on them. In total, there is 145mm of space for a CPU cooler. This does include the fan that could potentially be mounted in front of the cooler. The absolute max I was able to do is a 125mm high Noxia NHU9S with an Arctic F14 in front of it. Not that the F14 would really help anything as the Noxia is closed off at the top, but I just wanted to show that it works. Overall, the Borg is definitely built for a top blow-up cooler. Like, for example, something like a Noctua NHC14S with the fan mounted underneath the heatsink and then a F14 slapped on the fan rails. That would be a, a monster of a cooler. Unfortunately, I, I do not own any good top blowers of that proportions, but maybe I will do a follow-up video at some point. Getting back to the cooling, Surprisingly enough, we have water cooling support. According to Novolo, they made sure to work with Ace Attack and their 92mm all in one which can be mounted on the left side by moving the rails closer together. As fun as this is, you can mount a 120mm IIO or 140 if you find one just in front of the CPU. Nothing is keeping you from doing that. Okay, so I guess spec sheet finally over. Overall, the compatibility inside of the case is shockingly good for a 12 liter small form factor cube. We have two 10 mm long GPUs like a 3060 Ti, surprisingly high CPU cooler support, which could be combined with smart fan positions. The cooling concept inside of the Borg is actually really good considering how hard it is to get that amount of heat out of a case that small. Every panel is covered in little holes and if you install every fan to be an inlet, you will use natural convection to get all of that heat out at the top. I wanted to see how well it really works, so I took my 5600X with a Noctua NHU9S. I placed it on top of the table and just let it burn up at 100% fan speed. Using it as a room heater, the 5600X was sitting at 72 degrees C. After putting it inside of the Borg case with a F14 in front of the Noctua and a Prolimatech Ultra Sleek Vortex 14 Black. On the left side, the 5600X rise to 74 degrees C. So now we can see that the Borg case does not act like a microwave and that the CPU temp rise and rise and rise because it is unable to get the heat out. Seems like some Swiss cheeses work and other ones just don't. The only thing I would have really loved is an additional rail at the top like slightly beneath the power button with support for another 50mm fan. Natural convection is fun and all, but forcing the air through would surely improve the temps even more. On the design and quality side, while the interior of the Borg is made out of sturdy 1.5mm thick steel, the complete exterior is made out of aluminum, which does feel pretty nice and creates a general high quality appearance but we are still in 2021 and RGB seems to be mandatory by law, so Novolo packed some in there. By using a 3-pin ARGB header, you can control the lights which shine at the bottom of each side. And if you don't have a ARGB port on the motherboard, Novolo still got you covered with an ARGB controller and a remote included in the box. If you haven't noticed it before, Novolo makes a great deal out of symmetry. So once every panel is closed, every side of the case looks exactly the same. But aesthetics is a solely subjective thing, you might like the cube design going on, or you don't, that's your thing. I can only say that looking at it does, it does feel high quality and it is, it is pretty cool. Now the way the case is built, we have all of the I.O. coming out in the bottom. So to connect everything, we need to lift or place the case on the side, plug everything in and drop the wires through one of the openings. This way of, of building also creates quite the big buffer in the bottom. And I still have a couple of these Akaza strips which I really wanted to use. Nice. The Borg case is available in three colors. Made black, metallic grey and frost white. The one I have here is the made black one. But what's pretty nice is that when you buy a or you try to buy a Borg case, you can add a top panel add-on in a different color. So you can then start playing around with mix matching the top to get different looks, which all do look pretty cool. But I let the B-roll speak for themselves.
Overall, I must say the board case is incredibly interesting. The cooling concept works for a change, the compatibility is surprisingly good for the volume, quality is on point, nothing wiggles, everything is sturdy, and it overall just looks amazing. As for could have been better, I, I guess the manual, I mean this, this is not the manual, this is garbage, and I would have loved to have an additional fan at the top to get more heat out. It would just create a, a really, really good performer, and this, the, the, the better manual, would prevent me from getting out of stroke. But okay, this was my take on the Nuvolo Bulk Cube. At this point I would like to thank Nuvolo for sending me this very interesting case, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If so, don't forget to leave your like and your opinion down below, and make sure to be subscribed, because we still have a ton of new gear that, that waits for a review. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.